and we are back. Welcome, welcome. It is Wednesday, Wednesday, September 13th, and welcome to an all-new episode of Style by Stevie. Our very special guest today is a three-time world championship karate icon, and he's been known on the big screen as well also. Without further ado, let's welcome our handsome, incredibly talented special guest, Ethic Dewan. Hopefully it works this time. Fingers crossed. All right, let's see if this works now. Hello, hello. Hello, can you, can you see me? Yes. Okay, perfect. I don't know what was going on with that. This is actually my first time on an Instagram Live. Well, welcome, welcome to the dollhouse, Ethic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It is such a pleasure to have you here. So before we get into this interview, how has 2023 been for you so far? I know we are just about out. The year is halfway out. So how has 2023 been for you so far? Um, honestly, it's been pretty good, pretty busy. Um, it's been a pretty busy year for me, but it's been a positive year. So it's been pretty good so far. Yes. So before we get into this interview, your name is so catchy. It's like a clothing brand. It sounds like a clothing brand or something. How did you get the name? Uh, uh, my mom came up with that. Um, I'm not sure where she got it from, but she originally came up with that. Um, it is catchy. It will be a clothing name soon. We're, we're in the works. We are. We're, okay. We're... So you are a three time world championship karate expert six so six time okay six so, time karate go ahead i'm sorry i'm cutting yeah you off. six time karate and then i'm a hall of famer and then a kickboxing world champion as well okay so at what age did you say okay this is something that i want to go into at what age did you start doing martial arts I originally started when I was about nine years old, but I didn't start taking it seriously and really, all right, this is what I really want to do until I was about 19. And then I was like, okay, I can actually take this to another level. Mm. What did your parents say? Because I know the parents have some concerns. Okay, they're getting into mixed martial arts. Football is nothing. Sports is nothing but mixed martial arts. She put her hands on. Combat. So... What was parents' thoughts into that? <laughs> well, my mom, she was a little iffy, but my dad was okay with it. I've been getting in a lot of street fights when I was a kid, so she was like, at least it's something that's constructive and you're not right. like out here anymore because I got in a lot of street fights when I was a kid, so this is a better way for me to do it. And so she, she was okay with that. Now, from there on, when did you decide that acting would be a passion of yours because i know a lot of our parents with us getting into this business like you said they're pretty iffy about it i know especially for my mom she says you want to host a platform you want to host a talk <laughs> show ever since i was a baby that's something that i always wanted to do. i would line up my barbie dolls and practice like i had a microphone i always wanted to host a talk show so for you getting into acting what was your parents reactions to that I mean, they always knew that I probably would, because um, originally, about seven, eight years ago, I was a fashion model first. I did runway, I did print, I did magazines, and that got me in the door for acting. But initially, acting is what I wanted to do. So when I finally got into it, they were pretty happy, because that's what I wanted to do all along. Columbus Karate Academy International is here. Welcome. That's right. And that's where we're at. So if anybody, karate, kickboxing, that's where you can find us. Karate Columbus International. Make sure you put international. You will go to the wrong school. Now, the 2020 tournament, tell us about that. What was that experiment, it, well, experience like for you, the 2020 tournament? The 2020 or the 2023? 2020 tournament, yeah. So that one was pretty good because most of the other countries that usually come to that they were all there so we had some good fights so that one was actually pretty good that was one of the hardest ones because everybody was there so that was probably maybe the one of the toughest ones as far as the karate tournaments now speaking of you know 
overcoming challenges for you as an athlete because martial arts, believe it or not, people don't think is a sport. It is. So for you, how, what advice would you give to people when it comes to overcoming challenges? Because it can be difficult. It's very difficult. So what I try to focus on is the bigger picture. What is the end result? What is your why? Your why has to be bigger than everything. And with that, that's where the discipline comes in because it's, it's way too easy to quit. It's easier to do the wrong thing than it is to do the right thing. So I just remember the bigger picture. What is your why? Now, the, the acting aspect, what is it like on, for you on set as this six-time martial arts expert and you're having to do stunts? What is the weirdest thing that has ever happened to you while on set filming? Man, I I love it. The weirdest thing hasn't really just been weird, but there's been a couple of like controversial things. Um, okay. I got into it with a cast member before, um, Jason Mitchell, the guy who played Easy E, and he was on The Shy. That was probably the weirdest thing. I didn't expect him to be hating on me, but for some reason he was. So, you know, we had a little bit of a situation, but you know, yeah, that's the business. It is what it is. <sighs> <laughs> Even on my standpoint, where I stand being this host of this platform, is other people that think that there's competition out here. We're all doing the same thing. And I haven't had any rivalries or anything being in this business, but I do know that it gets very competitive. And everybody's, it's like the crabs, what I like to call the crabs, and I'm pretty sure everybody's heard it, the crabs at, uh, at the barrel mentality where we're all clawing, trying to get to the top. And it's just like, we're all doing the same thing. We're here to succeed. Exactly. But I meant injury wise, because I'm pretty sure I've had Spitfire Brown. I know you've heard of Spitfire, Mortal Kombat, Conquest. He was rain. I had him on not too long ago. And yeah. he was saying, hey, I'm getting lit up. I'm going to get lit on fire next week. And I said, <laughs> my face, like my eyes, like <laughs> you're getting what next week? Stunts, what is the, have you had any injuries on set? I did like, like one time I hurt my hand. Um, we were doing a fight scene and my hand got a little injured, but you know, we get through it. I like to do my own stunts like Jackie Chan. You know, he's the inspiration. He does all his own stunts. So I like to do all my own stunts. I don't want nobody doing my stunts but me. But I did hurt my hand one time. We were doing a fight scene for a film called Double Cross. And that'll probably be out at the end of this year. I did hurt my hand in that scene. But that's about it. Usually we're pretty safe. And then China McCoy, I had him on the show too. Anthony Velvet Hall, who's a wrestler, pro wrestler. So I've had all of these guys on the show and they tell me about their injuries. And a lot of people yeah. at home, mainly men, will try some of these stunts. And it's just like, no, do not try this at home. So <laughs> epic for you being a six-time martial arts champion, what advice would you give? Please give these guys at home that are trying these stunts out some advice on trying them out, thinking that they're the experts. And it's just like, nah, no. <laughs> I would just say, um, don't be stupid. That is not what you do. Stick to working at Home Depot or whatever you do. Don't, don't do that because you're not even getting paid for it. So that's pointless. <laughs> And you can wind up literally tearing something out of place. It was, um, who was it? It was Stone Cold Steve Austin. He said, well, I turned, torn this in nine different places. I'm just like, because yeah, a lot of people at home that watch wrestling think that it's play play. And it's just like, you know. The punch is a fake, but everything else is real. Like you're getting injured. You're getting hit with chairs. You're jumping off of stuff. I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'm a professional fighter and I'm not doing that. Right. Like, this is not a game you can and will injure yourself permanently. Absolutely. So we're going to shift gears here. Challenges, overcoming challenges as an actor and of color in this business. What advice would you give to other Black men that are looking to become actors, that are looking to get into the business? Just that aspect. I know with everything right. going on, the writer strike, the actor strike, what advice would you give to Black well, men that are looking to get into the business? Well, for start is um, just understand it's going to be very difficult. It's not going to be easy at all. It's going to be a journey. It's not going to be a sprint. It's going to be a marathon. You know, it takes work. And especially for us, our demographic, um, it's way more difficult 
quote, if you're not a name, then, you know, and you got to remember, you're competing with 6,000 other people. So you have to understand that you have to stand out. There has to be something about you that stands out from everyone else. Because you, all these other people who look like, like you, in a sense, how are you different? So you just have to understand that and distinguish yourself from the rest of your competition because there's so many other people. Everybody's good looking. Everybody can act. So what makes you different from the rest of them? So you have to really understand that, understand who you are. Exactly. And I love what your favorite feature said. He said that you ain't got no rivals because there's only one Stevie. That's right. And that's how I look at it. You just said it. It's so crazy. He said it and then you're saying it. So I talk about this all the time here on my platform, and that is individuality. You embrace your identity, especially when it comes to acting. How many of you guys watched 227 growing up? You guys know Jack A. She was talking about when she did Sister Sister with T and Tamara. And someone asked her, like, how can you tell if each girl has their personality because they're twins? I have cousins who are twins also. And they're so different. They look identical, but they're so different personality-wise. Like one is more mellow and the other one is more turnt, as the children would say. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> All right. But yes, um, it's about finding your own identity. So you know your name and you know your name. That's what Jackie said. So it's all about individuality and staying true to yourself. Now, my next question for you is, are your deadlines realistic and motivated when it comes to your career? Yeah, honestly, um, with my, as far as deadlines, um, I try to not emphasize on them so much because then you take away from the journey um, and you kind of have to live in the now, in the moment as well, because it is a beautiful journey. I mean, the struggle, everything, because once you endure that path, you finally get there. You look back like, man, I had to go through this, 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 and that, and then you appreciate the lessons. So I try not to emphasize on that so much. Um, I just think about the overall, the bigger picture. What's the best reality you wish for, and how does it compare to your present? Well, for me, one of my overall goals, of course, is to be successful, but mm -hmm. not just for me, because I want to be successful, of course, in what I love doing and be able to take care of my family with that. But for me, it gives me an opportunity to have a platform, you know, to inspire the youth and show them there's a different way. You know, you don't have to be a rapper. You don't have to be a basketball player. You know, you can do whatever you want because I'm just from a small city too, you know. Um, and one of my end goals is to, of course, I have outreach programs and things like that, but I overall I want to build a rec center. And I want to have, you know, our history that is taught, uh, life lessons, you know, college prep, martial arts, things that we really need to achieve. So eventually that's one of my end goals is that because I want to help change the world. You know, we have to save our youth. If we don't do it, who's going to do it? Absolutely. I love what you just said, Epic, because it's so funny. And Jesse Wu, um, she just said this not too long ago. What they're doing in Florida, they're trying to stop and erase our history, Black history. <laughs> And I love that you still want to keep it going and flourish. And it's important that we need to, as people of color, as Very Black important. people, we need to keep our legacy here on. We've invented so much. We've done so much for this country that you can't erase our history because it's our story. You you just can't erase that. Yeah. So I'm glad that you want to keep that going as well. Exactly. Because if you try to erase Black history, then you're erasing American history at the end of the yeah. day. So it's very important that we even teach our children outside of the schools because they're only going to get so much from the school. So it's on us as well to teach about our history. Black inventors, black creators. We've done so much for the culture. You you can't erase that. That's going to be here. So I'm glad that you touched on that. And I know you right. guys are waiting on me to say something about what's going on in Florida, but that's my thoughts on it. You can't erase black exactly. history. We've done so much. For that's that. simple. All right, so my next question for you is what habits do you want to break and which ones do you want to cultivate? So I'll start with my bad habits. Um, sometimes it's just 
mainly in my off season when I'm not getting ready for fights. Sometimes my diet, I'll let it slip a little bit. Um, and I gotta, I like, I'm not gonna lie, I like snacks. So sometimes <laughs> I let it slip a little bit whenever I'm not preparing for a fight. Um, but my good habits are, I'm very consistent. So I do want to keep that and make sure my focus is there because I've always been very strong mentally. Um, so I've been able to be consistent and had that strong mind and seeing the end result and staying focused. That's probably my number one right there. Yes, because as trainers, well, not, not, I would talk show hosts, I'm not into martial arts, <laughs> but I definitely can understand what it's like when you have your cheat days and you got to stick yeah. to that. You got to make sure to stay healthy, stick to that regimen. But my thing is this, I indulge in moderation, but yeah. make sure that you're healthy as well too because for us as black people health is number one over anything we have the most health problems well we have to make sure that we all top yeah it it is because you know health is your wealth like that's a that's a real statement and so it's very important so i do um i do try to reward myself a little bit in moderation you know like you were saying because if you just try to just cold turkey no nothing nothing that's very difficult so you got to just kind of ease into it and do it in moderation. You know, even I fall victim sometimes to, you know, the temptation (laughs) of the snacks and stuff. So ward yourself a little bit. And that was going to be my next question for you is, how do you celebrate your happiness and success? Man, so for me, one, relaxing with my family. Mm -hmm. And two, whenever I do accomplish something, I always try to give myself like one reward because your hard work it has to be you know what are you getting out of it you know of course the result of what happened but you know you gotta you know you gotta do something for yourself so i usually try to i like i like watches so i might buy another watch or something like that just do something that i actually want to do what are some of your rituals before getting into character on set so the main ritual for me is Whenever I have a script, I take a thousand notes in there and I'm always making a backstory of my character. So once I, once I get on set, I've already got that backstory. I know who my character is and that's kind of how I get started with my character. Cause I start my character building as soon as I get my script. So if you look at any of my scripts, you see all these notes and that's kind of how I do it. Brand- 405 says, stay great, bro. Oh, my man. Oh, he's a, he's a good guy. That's my guy right there. Shout out and to him. Yeah, my next question for you is support. How does the support feel that you're getting from your family, your loved ones? Because in this business, we're, we're not always by our family, especially when the pandemic hit. It was like hard to see our family members, our loved ones, and our friends because we're all set and then we had the quarantine and all of these things. Right. So how does it have that love and support around you? Honestly, it's a blessing because that's very important. Like you're, you have to have that. Like that's like foundation. Support is everything because when you're, even if you're on your own, you're making all these moves, you have no one around you to tell you to keep going, to tell you to proud of you. It's very hard to be motivated when you don't have that. So support is very important because I wouldn't be where I'm at if it wasn't for my family, my friends, especially family, because they've been very supportive. You know, sometimes it's difficult because you're trying to accomplish something, you know, it might affect other people. But for the most part, my family has been very supportive. So if it wasn't for them, then I wouldn't be here. So it's very, very important to me. Fabian says, congratulations on what you achieved and accomplished. Wishing you all the best and keep doing what you are doing and achieving that greatness. Oh, man. Thank you, sir. Shout out to him, Baltimore. I'll be back out there one day, probably soon. My next question for you is because we talked a lot about challenges throughout this interview. What is the most challenging scene that you've ever had to film in a project? Oh, man. So the most challenging one was actually a stage play. Um, it was called Pieces of Him by LaCharles Purvey. Shout out to him. That role was very, very difficult. This was in 2018 because it was my first stage play and I had to lead role. And I was coming from film to theater 
And so it was very difficult. And the character was was very depth. Um, it was basically about a young man. He was about 17 years old. He was coming to himself and he was trying to hide his, his true self, of course. And so it was very difficult to tap into that because I've never been there before. So I had to tap into that and really try to bring that character to life and really put my mind in that place. So that was probably the most difficult one by far. And that, that was going to be another question that I was going to ask you is, being an actor, do you ever find yourself, okay, I need to pull back out of this character. I'm no longer the character. I'm ethic now. Have you ever had an experience like that when you're on set where you're like, okay, I need to come back to reality or I brought the character home with you? And that yeah. happens. That tends to happen. <laughs> yeah, one time, but it wasn't a bad character. He was just like a comedian and always messing with people and cracking jokes. And I just kind of carried on a little bit. And I just remember chill out a little bit. But that's probably the only time. But it wasn't, it wasn't a bad character, though. We be, okay. be in there, it, you know. This is real. Yeah. And that happens while you're on set. I think it was it was Kiki Palmer and then... Who else? Lupita. They were saying how literally Lupita said she had the detox after doing the character for us. And then Kiki Palmer, she played the character. She was a pimp in a film. And she said she literally had to detox from this character because when she went home with her family, the character was still inside us. Like that happens to actors sometimes mm -hmm. yeah. when you're not on set and it's still with you. And it's just like, okay, come back to reality. I'm no longer this person exactly. anymore. This is this I mean, know that they're a good actor and they're really diving deep into that role and that character because you have to. A lot of people think that acting is just pretending. No, we're really in these, we're really in these modes. Like it's not, not going to come off authentic on this camera if you're not really into that. Like we're really in the minds of these characters. We really, we are these characters. So we're really invested when we're doing it so it's not just like pretending like people think it is it's just oh you just go pretend no you have to live it that's why it takes so long to prepare first and then film because you have to really build that core so that's a it's a real thing i'm seeing so many of y'all come in here thank y'all so much for all this love and support that y'all are giving me Definitely. um as we all know new york fashion week is coming to a close i think this week is the last week it was but stay tuned. Make sure you guys are following Style by Stevie Daytime here on the gram. I will have you covered with London Fashion Week coverage. I'm going to be doing coverage for Original Magazine UK. And that should be coming. I can't spill the deets yet. Just make sure that you guys are following Original Magazine UK. You guys know that I am one of the fashion writers for Original Magazine. So I had to plug that in there because I'm seeing so many of you guys. Thank you for checking out the stories. Thank you for checking out the posts. Just check it all out. It's a lot. Uh, here on Style by Stevie. So my last question for you before we get into our games ethic, because we're going to have some fun with you today, is if you could go back in time and tell your younger self something, what would you tell your younger self? I'd probably tell them to stay focused because mm -hmm. when I was a little bit younger, I didn't have that focus and that discipline. And if I did, I would be further along in my career than I am now. So I would probably just emphasize how important those moments are. Yes. All right, Fashion Dolls, last question. We're going to do our games, and then we're going to take some questions from the audience, the viewers as well, too. All right? And then we're going to wrap up. Joining me Friday, we have Cody Cow will be joining me. So make sure you guys tune in Friday, and make sure you guys are following Style by Stevie. We will be back January 2024, season 18, my 18th season, and we just did 500 episodes. So thank you guys so much for your love and unconditional support. I didn't see it. Where? I didn't see it. I didn't see your question. <laughs> I didn't see your question either. <laughs> so type it in. Let me see. Let me check my box. Oh, there we go. We got a question. And it says, for Miley Yankee, since you're disciplined in craft, what role required you to get loose? To get what? To get loose. I really haven't had a... Um wild loose role yet honestly i really haven't had to 
I mean, I'm looking forward to it. You know, it'll be a new challenge, but um, I really haven't had to do that too much yet. All right, Fashion Dolls, and we'll take more questions. After our game segment, we are about to do something called the Rapid Five. And Ethic has to tell us five things that he can't live without. And it can be some of your favorite things, your favorite drink, your favorite football team, favorite movie, whatever you can't live without. These five items, all right? And then we're going to do something called Turn the Tables. And this is where my guests get to ask me questions, as many as they want. It can be on family, it can be on beauty, it can be on uh, goals, passions, dreams, whatever they want to know for the new viewers out there, you get to find out through ethics questions, all right? So we're going to start off with the rapid five. What are five things that ethics can't live without? Man, all right, so first of all, my phones, my two phones, all right. so I'm going to keep that as two. I definitely can't go without those because I have to, my emails and everything like that. So my phones, three, I, I would say Arizona teas. I'm not gonna lie. Arizona tea. Those are my favorite. That's my drink of choice when I'm not drinking water and stuff like that. Preferably watermelon flavor. That's the best drink ever made. Um, and then I would say the gym. You can't live without that. I have to be in the gym to do what I do. And my books. All right, there you have it. That is five things that you can't live without, fashion dolls. All right, as we all know, it is time to turn those tables here. So Ethic is going to ask me some questions, as many as he wants, whatever he's curious to know. And for the viewers out there, you get to know a little bit about me through his question. All right, so take, take it away. Ethic. So my first question is, how long have you had this platform? Star by Stevie started in 2014. And this was right after I graduated, right out of high school. I had no idea what I was doing. And before it wasn't originally called Style by Stevie, it was called Weekday Topics. And we wouldn't do it at 4. It would be at 11 a.m. So it would be around the morning time. And I would get fussy because I'm like, why aren't people checking it out? But people would check it out when they're on their break or whatever. But I said, we got to change the time. We got to come up with a name. We got to come up with a concept. What are things that people like? And Boom, Style by Stevie just came to mind. Right. Where is Style by Stevie from? Miss Stevie is from South Carolina, born and raised. I am a Southern girl. I know I talk. There is this stigma that we're supposed to sound a certain way, but <laughs> hey, I, I still got my slang. It's, it's still in there. It's a little bit still in there. <laughs> I've been there a couple of times. I fought there before in South Carolina. Okay. Is that where you still resign now? Yes. Nice, nice. I've been there a couple of times, South Carolina. Okay. What is your overall goal with your platform? I want to bring something cutting edge to the scene, something that people have never seen before, you know, fashion wise, because I'm always pushing the envelope, pushing boundaries, doing things that are outside of my comfort zone and out of other people's comfort zones that they've never experienced. It. Just open, opening their mind to different things they've never seen before. You know, different guests, different topics, things that bring people joy. So my goal is to have my own television network. If Oprah can do it, I can be the second Black right. woman to do it and break boundaries and shatter glass ceilings. So that's my goal. That's right. And that's a that's a dope thing there. Have you ever gone to the New York Fashion Week? Actually, I have family in New York. It's funny you mentioned that Brownsville I'm and Brooklyn. So I'm pretty sure my sister and my niece went, but I've never been to New York Fashion Week as far as writing about it and seeing it in fashion magazines and flipping through the pages and seeing the models backstage is just amazing. Definitely think you should go. Um, I actually just got back from there a couple of days ago. I was there. Um, I, I was a special guy. Yeah. So EPN Fashion Week, shout out to them for having me. Um, I was one of the special guests along with Vanessa Williams. Um, so it was beautiful. It was a lot of great designers. So I think it would definitely be worth it for you to go out there and check that out at least one of the, one time. I want to. So bad. I want to go to 
New York Fashion Week, I want to go to Paris Fashion Week, London Fashion Week, Milan Fashion Week. I'd love to go to them all. And you said, Vanessa, how you know about Vanessa? Because I had her on the show. Yeah. <laughs> so my manager knows her. Um, and that's how he kind of got me involved with it. And, and we were both the featured special guests. Um, but, you know, she knows who I am and everything. But we kind of both were put into that situation. She wasn't able to make it, unfortunately, but she was one of I was like, ah. I did run into my man Mario, though, at the uh, airport. Shout out to him. Make sure y'all see when his shows are. Go support him. That brother is very. I, I, Vanessa, doing that interview to me is still, and I'm still talking about it. You did it in 2022, I want to say. And it was nerve wracking for me because when she came on camera she didn't have like how you guys see i'm all made up today right. she didn't have like, no makeup she had on glasses just as beautiful as ever and she popped up with these beautiful crystal blue eyes and she said hey how you doing i, I was just like <laughs> man you i know, when you have that. a moment when you're meeting somebody that you've idolized since your childhood i would be flipping through all hairstyle magazines and i would see this woman as one of the best styled women and watching Soul Food and watching her music videos. Exactly. And then seeing her right there in front of me in real time was just so unsurreal. That was my pinch me moment. And that was one of the greatest interviews I've ever done. She's, so, yeah. she's great. She's a great person. I got to see that. And I got to. You still have the interview? Yes, I have it. That's, it. That is one that I will never forget. And people still to this day are talking about it. Well, you interviewed Vanessa, you interviewed Tommy Davidson. Yeah, yeah. I sat with some of the greats here on this platform and I don't talk talk too much about it because I'm just like, those moments are sacred and I wouldn't take them for granted because they're so precious to me. And I'm glad that God put me in that position to be able to sit with these icons and they tell me what it's like, you know, their experiences just through life and getting to the part where it's just like superstar. It's it's amazing. So that is one interview that I will cherish and she dropped some gems as well too throughout that interview she also gave me some beauty secrets too so yes <laughs> That's so she said, I, I got a couple of her beauty secrets in that interview so lots of oils and serums and I definitely took her advice and we're here oh, yeah. I'm talking about she definitely she knows that's uh that's that's, that's the beauty of uh, all of this you know we all are connected one way or another. You know, this platform gives opportunity to connect us, other people, you know, and that's the beauty in it. So I appreciate you for having me on. It's, uh, it's been a pleasure. I've been looking forward to it, actually. Yes, it was such an honor to have you on. Six-time martial arts champion at the Dewan, ladies That's and gentlemen. Yes, ma'am. You know, we... A lot of hard work. I was glad glad you had me on. I saw it. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, let me let me go do that. I'm I'm proud to be here. So I appreciate you for having me on for sure. Always a pleasure, and I would love to have you back in the again. So before we let you go, are there any gems or words of wisdom that you would like to take away your supporters that are watching right? Um, I'm actually going to soon, I'm going to have, um, uh, every week where I'm dropping one on my Facebook. So mm-hmm. make sure y'all stay tuned for that. Cause I'm going to start dropping them every week. Cause I got a lot of them. So, uh, well, I can save one. Um, never buy what you don't need because it may come a time you can't buy what you need. Save your money. Financial literacy. Absolutely. And I'm going to add on to what Epic just said. Today's final thought of the day comes from James Baldwin, one of my favorite writers. He says, people pay for what they do and still more for what they have allowed themselves to become. And they pay for it very simply by the lives they lead. You are in charge of your destiny. You are in charge of your future. And I tell people this all the time because people think that I invite guests onto the platform and force them to tell their stories. I'm just like, no, this is real in this moment between me and this particular guest, whoever I'm interviewing. They share their story. I'm not responsible for what they put out. 
And that's what I want people to learn is that you are in charge of your destination. You are in charge of your story. Your journey is your journey. And the next person's journey is the next person's journey. So my journey might not be like the next person's journey or the next person's journey, but you are in charge of your life. You are the author. You are the publisher. You are the editor. If you want to go back and change whatever you want to change, you are in charge of that. But I must say we continue to keep empowered and stay surrounded and grounded by people who uplift us. And what when it comes to negativity, take those, those poison apples right out the bunch. I, I don't I don't need them. Take them right out the bunch. You don't need them in your life. Like there are people like that that will continue to drain off of you and your happiness when you're at you have sown so far. So you've ascended. And that would be my gym that I would love for you guys. And those haters and motivators. If you don't have any, hey, you know you're doing something right when you got haters. Absolutely. I'll throw dirt in your eyes and run. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> Yankee, what am I going to do with him, y'all? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So without further ado, Ethic, let everyone know where they can follow you and check out this project that is coming out next year, you said? Yes. So you all can follow me on my Instagram, of course, Ethic underscore Dijon, D-E-J-A-U-N. Also on Facebook, Ethic Dijon. Um, stay tuned with my Instagram because mostly that's where I post the upcoming projects and everything like that. So stay tuned on the IG page for sure. All right, fashion dogs. And that concludes our interview for today. Joining me Friday, we have Cody Cal. And then as you know, the lineup will go up for next week, Friday. So make sure you guys stay tuned and also head on over and subscribe to Style by Stevie Daytime on YouTube. If you have not hit that bell, so you'll be notified when new interviews are uploaded to my channel and you'll be able to catch it. All right, I love you all. And you have one more question, let me see. Oh, okay. That's a good one. Okay. The last question is, do you look up to Michael Ja White since he does martial arts and acts as well? Oh, that's me. My guy, man. I love Michael Ja White. Like, and I've got to meet him and everything. Yeah. He's actually one of my idols and He's because of the acting and the martial arts. So yeah, that's, that's my number one guy. Like, um, you know, most people look at Chuck Norris, Bruce Lee. I look at Michael Jai White. He's, that's my guy. I definitely look up to Michael Jai White. And hopefully we do and it then, together. Yeah, I, watching him growing up, I, I always know him as Spawn. A lot of people go for, why did I get married? Mark yeah. is. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I know him as Spawn. We, like, Spawn was like our, Spawn and Blade Guilty. and Rain for Mortal Kombat were our mm -hmm. versions of Black Panther growing up. Mm -hmm. And then Black Panther, Chadwick came along and it just took a phenomenon of its own. Exactly. Shout out to Michael John White, man. Tell him, hey, we need to work, man. I'm trying to trying to get the way we can do a film together or something. Maybe you play my dad or something. I don't know. We gotta we gotta do a film together for sure. People be calling me baby Michael John White. I'm, so we yeah we got to work together eventually. Yeah, All right. Dope. I could see it. We're going to manifest it and put it in the future. Oh, yeah. So it's going to happen. Sure. I believe that for sure. All right, fashion dolls. Without further ado, special thanks to our very special guest, Ethic Dijon. Thank you, Ethic, so much for this incredible interview. I had such a great time. Absolutely. Thank you for having me, and we'll definitely do it again in the future. Definitely. Make sure you guys tune in Friday and subscribe to Style by Stevie Daytime on YouTube. I love you all, and you guys, please be safe out here. It is pouring down. I can hear it from outside. So y'all be safe and take care. <laughs> Send me the link, too. I'll subscribe. I definitely will send everything to you. All right. Yes, ma'am. Sounds good to me. Thank you for having me.